All right, so here we have a pixel pattern from Matt, and this thing has evolved a bunch. Uh, I like like this pattern because I, I I think what's interesting about it is it reminds me that one of the most difficult aspects of creating a pattern is picking what step number is represented by each image. And there's been some discussion between us back and forth about what to do. And right now, as it stands, step zero is actually kind of undefined, and step one is where this first black pixel starts. And in analyzing this, this pattern, uh, I've come to the conclusion that step zero should not be this mystery number. And in fact, step zero should be right here with this black pixel, which makes this step two. Now this will make a lot of the process easier. Uh, it's not that it can't be done like it is right now, it's just that currently as it is, we might need to think about some kind of negative scenario here for step zero, and that might be a little confusing. Can it be analyzed that way? Sure. But let's take the path of least resistance. So first, let's start with the perimeter. And let's say it's p as a function of uh, our step number, ps. OK, so the perimeter, uh, as we discussed it, is just the perimeter, uh, the outer perimeter of whatever you're given. So uh, I'm going to list some perimeters here. So we have step numbers and perimeters at those steps. So we'll just go 0, 1, 2. All right, so at step zero, the perimeter is four. This has four sides, one, two, three, four. Step two, step one, we have, sorry, these four red pixels added, and the outer perimeter. In other words, if I drew a square around our shape here, what would the perimeter of that square be? That's what we're really looking at here. And that perimeter is, well, it's five on this side, it's five on every side, so uh, it's five times four, which is 20. So our perimeter, goes from 4 to 20. It goes up 16. And then step 2, this whole thing right here, right? if we surrounded this with a box in step 2, what would the perimeter of that square be? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, this has a height of 3, 6, 9. So 9 times 4 is 36. So as you notice, the, uh, the rate at which this is increasing is 16. So to write this equation, I want you to think about how to do this. I'll give you a little hint. Uh, in an alternate scenario, right, let's say we had another shape. So here's a similar situation or scenario. If I had a shape that started off with a perimeter of 5 and it added 15 with every step, this would be my equation, right? The perimeter based on the step number is 5 plus 15s. So you can apply that here to write the perimeter equation for yourself. Now in the graph of my equation over here, not yours, but mine, this five will represent the y-intercept of the graph. And I'll show what that looks like in a second. And this 15 would represent the slope. And this is something you already knew. I'm just reminding you of this so you don't forget it. So this graph right here, in my scenario, not yours, this is the sample. We start off at one, two, three, four, five. Let's go by, this is five right here. So say this is 10, I'm estimating, this is 15. So what I would want to see is the first couple of steps. I would say, OK, it's step 0 to 5, and then step 1 it goes all the way. Um, this is 5. Let's say, oh man, this is really not the scale. I apologize. Let's say this is 10, this is 15, and this is 20. I'm going to put a little break in the scale here because it's so off. It goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then 10, 15, 20. So it goes a 15 each time. That means the next point would be here. And I'd have this nice line represented by this equation. Of course, you don't have that. You have something a little bit different. But the idea is the same. Make sure you can see that y-intercept and the slope in the equation. And oh, let me show you one other thing. In my equation, I'd also want to know what the perimeter would be at step 100. So I'd plug in 100 to my equation. It would be 5 plus 15 times 100, which is 1,505. So that would tell me the perimeter of step 100 is 1,505. I want to know, Matt, what's the perimeter of your state shape at step 100? See if you can find that. All right, so now let's analyze the red and the blue pixels. Um, so here, let's write down a little table. Just as you did, we have step, red, blue. So in step 0, there are no red and no blue, only black. In step 1, we add 4 red, but still no blue. In step two, you can see here there are four blue finally, and still four red. In step three, we just now alternate back and forth. There will now be eight red and still four blue. 
And step four, there will be still eight red, but then finally eight blue. So, so with the red function here, uh, I noticed that these hops here and the number of pixels is four. So it's like the slope is four times our step number. But our step number, if we divide it by two and then round it, this allows us to stay at a certain um, amount for a total of two steps. Right, so we can stay at eight twice, stay at four twice. <clears throat> I would divide by three if we stay at a certain number three times, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, what works out really nicely in this case, and in general, is either round up or round down with the function. And here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try uh, try both, really. Uh, I, I, I'll try rounding, um, rounding down first. Okay, so, um, actually, well, let's see what happens. So here, red as a function of the step number. If I plug in zero, I should get zero. If I plug in one, I should get four. If I plug in two, I should get four. If I plug in three, I should get eight. So let's plug in three. What is R of three using this formula right here? Well, three divided by two is, well, three divided by two is one and a half. Rounded down is one. These brackets here with the little bottoms are floor functions and we round down. Um, now one times four is four but we should get eight so this has got to be incorrect. So let's just go back. And this time let's write a ceiling function. Let's round up and see if that fixes our problem. So red as a function of step number. So r of three does it equal eight? Well yes it does because three divided by two rounded up is actually two. Now, when we say round up, round up to the nearest whole number. And 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half. Rounded up is 2. Times 4 is 8. Um, and then if we plug in all the other ones, you could try it out. It will actually give us the correct number of red. And then show us at 100 what we have. Well, 100 divided by 2 is 50. 50 does not need to be rounded up or down because it's already a whole number. Times 4 uh, is 200. So there will be 200 red pixels. Now, how do you write the equation for the blue? Because... Our whole conversation on the red doesn't help with the blue because the blue has the same features seemingly, right? It, it repeats twice and it goes up by four. So this, what can we do? Well, a key observation is to realize that um, the red steps, if you kind of shift them down to the blue steps here, they're always equivalent. And that might not be enough to help, so let's go a little bit further. So here, we this is red at step 0, this is red at step 1, this is red at step 2, this is red at step 3, this is red at step 4, and so on and so forth. So if we, let me just clear some of this off right here. If we write this down, that tells me something. It tells me, hey, if I want to know what, what blue is at step 1, I know it's going to equal red at step 0. So the red steps, red at 0, red at 1, red at 2, red at 3, and red at 4, they are equivalent to the following blue step. So it equals blue at 1, blue at 2, blue at 3, and so on and so forth. So the question is, how can we use this idea to write an equation for the blue function? In general, what can we say? And here is a nice hint. Well, the red, well, let's write it from this perspective. It's a little bit easier. Blue at, and I, I changed my blue slightly, sorry, at any step always equals the red step before it. Right? This is what we're saying here. Now, your, your, your challenge is to turn this into an equation the blue. And my hint to you is, is to realize that this right here is the input for our function and that gets plugged directly into our equation. In other words, plug this input into this equation here instead of just plugging in the input of s into this spot, plug in the input s minus 1 and then show how to use that equation to find blue at step 100 and other steps as well. Try that out, see what you can do. And then make sure you graph the red and the blue step function. I would show that here, but based on your work so far, it's 
it seems obvious to me that you understand how to do that. So again, uh, what I need to see is a linear function for your perimeter into a graph with the equation, predicting where it is at step 100, and show this thinking, this work for the red step function using your own words, and then show this connection here, explain what these arrows are, how these connect the red and blue function, show something about this here, and finally use this to write an equation for the blue function, right? And show how to calculate it for blue function at step 100. And if you need help with that, let me know. Thanks.